Tēnā koutou katoa. Nau mai, haere mai. Welcome to this presentation on our new draft Waste Management and Minimisation Plan. Auckland, it's time to talk trash. This plan informs the backbone of the Council's approach to waste for the next six years. From what we want to achieve, how we'll work to get there, and what our key priorities and actions will be. We need everyone, whānau and communities, young and old, businesses, institutions and government on the waka to zero waste. From the 28th of February to the 28th of March, all Aucklanders will have their chance to have their say on our draft plan. This is a short slideshow about the plan, along with how to have your say during the consultation period. Waste is everyone's responsibility, and we want to hear from as many people as possible to give us our best chance of turning the tide on waste. Let's start by taking a look at what the draft plan seeks to achieve. Since our first waste plan in 2012, we've had the aspirational and enduring vision to get Auckland to zero waste by 2040. Moving towards a zero waste circular economy means we reduce environmental damage while retaining valuable resources that can nourish people and the planet. In practice, this means reducing the resources we take from the environment in the first place. Redesigning things to preserve the value of the resources and reduce environmental impacts. Caring for, reusing, repairing, restoring and valuing our resources and ensuring the final disposal does not diminish the well-being of people, land, air or water. We've made some big strides to minimise waste in recent years, but we still have a lot of work to do. In just one week, the Auckland region generates enough waste to fill an entire rugby field. This is 28,500 tonnes per week and 1.5 million tonnes of waste each year. The financial costs of collection, transport, disposal of waste is only a small fraction of the true cost of waste. Like an iceberg, many costs are hidden below the surface, affecting the economy, the environment and our communities. This includes the lost resources and energy that we're throwing away and the environmental damage from extracting and trans transporting replacement resources. It also includes the impacts of landfills, as well as the negative effects of litter and dumping, which harm our communities. We all have an impact on the amount of waste we generate and on where that waste ends up. The good news is that the rate of growth in our waste mountains seems to be slowing, as shown by the dark solid line that has dipped a bit on this graph. However, we're still sending nearly 1.5 million tonnes annually to municipal landfill and we'll be sending even more in 2040 if things don't change. We can and we should do better. But Auckland Council can't do this alone. Together and with the right plan in place, we can make a difference. So how do we go about turning the tide on waste? Preventing waste in the first place is the most powerful form of waste reduction and the best option to reduce its impacts on people and the environment. The waste hierarchy identifies the preferred ways of addressing waste, starting with waste reduction, such as rethinking how products are designed and extending their lifespan. Together with options to reuse, repair or repurpose items is what we should be doing the most of. Working on actions at the top of the waste hierarchy is a focus of this draft waste plan. At the same time, we can't lose sight of the fact that recycling right, diverting food scraps and green waste by composting and other methods are going to be really important parts of the solution. We are really excited to present our draft waste plan. This is informed by a solid base of evidence which is captured in our waste assessment. This document is what you'll find on our Have Your Say website, akhaveyoursay.nz. 
Uh, waste assessment is research on how much and what kind of waste we're producing across the region. It also forecasts how much waste we are likely to produce in the future, along with options to reduce that trajectory. We gathered ideas from iwi, community groups and industry to draft this plan and are incredibly grateful for their feedback to date. A waste plan for Aotea, Great Barrier Island and Waiheke, Kawo and Rakino Islands of the Hauraki Gulf is included in an appendix. This acknowledges the unique challenges and opportunities of dealing with waste in island communities. We have set some new targets to reduce waste by 2030. These have been chosen as measurable targets, which won't be easy to meet, but are achievable if we all pull together and do the mahi. The plan aims to reduce total waste to municipal landfill by 30% per person by 2030 and reduce domestic curbside rubbish by 29% per person. These align with the Aotearoa New Zealand Waste Strategy, so the whole country is moving in the same direction. We also need to make sure that Auckland Council and the council controlled organisations, such as Auckland Transport and Ekepanuku, are walking the talk. So, we have a target to reduce council waste by 50%, alongside work to establish and set targets for operational waste reduction. Tackling Auckland's waste is a huge task. That's why we need to have priorities to guide our actions for the next six years. The draft plan has 12 priorities arranged across four areas. Empowering partnerships with iwi and the community, including through the network of community recycling centres, is the first priority. Community recycling centres are places you can take unwanted items for resale or recycling. Secondly, the plan focuses on targeting specific activities and materials that make up a large proportion of our waste or are difficult to find solutions for. Thirdly, advocating for action from the government and industry to enable actions further up the waste hierarchy is a really key priority. The last area is the direct action that the Council can take to reduce waste through our household collection services walking the talk with our own activities and addressing litter and illegal dumping. Across all of these areas, we will need to work in partnership with a range of groups to get to zero waste, because we cannot do it alone. Which waste streams will we prioritise for action and why? A difference in this plan compared to previous plans is a greater focus on the climate emissions of major waste streams. We propose to continue our focus on organic waste. This covers food scraps, green waste, timber, paper and cardboard. Organic material and landfill contributes to more greenhouse gases leading to climate change. And sending these resources to landfill makes absolutely no sense because they can be reused, repaired or turned back into beneficial products like compost or fertiliser. We'll continue our focus on plastics. The government has made progress on banning some single-use plastics, but they are still a significant waste stream. We've added packaging to the waste streams because, like plastics, it often ends quickly up in landfill. Textiles are another new priority in this plan. Textiles have a large environmental footprint during manufacture and transport, as well as contributing to greenhouse gases in landfill and plastic waste. Biosolids come from the treatment of water and solids that goes down toilets, baths, showers and from washing machines. Currently, most biosolids in the region go to rebuilding the land at the Pukitutu Island Quarry. However, this will be complete in the early 2030s, so Watercare will start working with communities and stakeholders on options for Auckland's biosolids in future. So far we've covered the bigger picture of our waste priorities and targets, but at a household level, what does this mean for you? We will keep providing core services through our curbside collections, with some changes to reduce waste even further. The changes include extending the rates funded rubbish collections to the whole region from this year 
including Rodney. This is work that we started after consultation in 2022, and it means that areas including the North Shore, West Auckland and Papakura will no longer need to buy tags for their rubbish collections. Instead, households will pay for their collections by a targeted rate like the rest of Auckland. You will still have a choice of three different bin sizes to suit your needs. The next big step to reduce household waste that we're proposing is moving to a fortnightly rubbish collection. This proposal isn't new. It was put forward in our two previous waste plans for implementation alongside a food scraps service. The change would mean that you would put your food scraps bin out every week, but you would alternate your recycling bin and rubbish bin every other week. So you would only have two bins out on the curbside at a time. We need to reduce the amount of waste that we send to landfill. Experience from both Aotearoa New Zealand and overseas shows that fortnightly rubbish collections are a good way to do this. Many councils, including Hamilton, Christchurch and Tauranga, already collect rubbish fortnightly. Fortnightly collections incentivise people to use their food scraps bin more often, since those are emptied weekly or they compost at home leaving more space in their rubbish bin. People are also more likely to put their recyclable materials into their recycling bin and not into their rubbish bin. And many people also rethink their purchases, opting for reusable or recyclable products, or they take certain waste streams like soft plastics to drop off points or recycling centres. Other benefits of a fortnightly rubbish collection include reducing the amount of trucks on the road and cost saving, which will be passed on to ratepayers. We know that some people are concerned about whether they will be able to cope, but our audits show that people are putting a lot of recycling, garden waste and food scraps into rubbish bins. In fact, almost two thirds of the average Aucklanders rubbish bin is not actually rubbish at all, and it should not be going to landfill. We know that some people, such as those in large households or those who need to dispose of medical waste, have specific waste needs. We are really keen to hear from you on what support you might need to reduce your waste. We are also looking to, at other options to incentivise very low waste producing households and are really keen for feedback on this. So, what do you think of our goals, targets, priorities and actions? We want to hear from you about how we can strengthen this plan so we can give Auckland the best chance to reduce waste and care for people and the planet. Our feedback process is open from the 28th of February to the 28th of March. It's easy to complete and consists of seven short questions. Have your say today and help us spread the word. For more information on our draft plan, check out our snapshot document or the full draft waste plan online. For more information about our proposed move to fortnightly rubbish collections, see the frequently asked questions on our website. In creating this plan, we are working towards a Tamaki Makoto where nothing is wasted. But a zero waste future means so much more than just minimizing waste. It's also about creating more resources for the community, green jobs, clean, swimmable oceans, reducing carbon emissions, creating healthy soil for growing kai, drinking water, and thriving biodiversity for future generations. Will you join us? Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa.